Hi guys, Yuri here again. Welcome to YB Plays Music. If you're new to the channel, you might not notice, but to all the people that already subscribed, you might notice that it's a different setup than usually. Normally, uh, I'm upstairs in my recording room, I would say, and usually most of my tutorials are guitar based. And some of you might know or not, but I first learned how to play the piano before I started to learn how to play the guitar. But starting today, I'm gonna show you guys how to start learning music in general, uh, regardless if you want to learn how to play the piano, just want to understand music, or learn another instrument for that matter, because a keyboard is actually, in my opinion, the easiest tool to learn how to play music, because of the structure of the keyboard itself and all its aspects in that. So let's start off by taking a look at the keyboard right here. Now, there are different kind of keyboards and not all of them have the same amount of keys in them. Uh, but if you have a full keyboard, there are 88 keys from top to bottom, uh, including the black keys and the white keys together. Now, in music, we have different notes. And there are actually only 12 unique notes. But we have each of those in different octaves. And that means, for example, if we have a C, that's one of the notes, which is this one. We have that in multiple octaves. We have it in a couple of octaves lower. We have it in a couple of octaves higher. So if I want to have the C, but an octave lower than this one, then I go one lower, which is here. If I go one higher, it's right here. But it's the same note, it's all the C, but it's in different octaves. So we only have 12 unique notes actually. But you might ask yourself, then why do we have 88 keys if there only are 12 unique notes? Well, that's because those 12 different notes repeat themselves in different octaves. And those octaves can be higher or lower. And so we see the same notes coming back when we go higher on the keyboard or lower on the keyboard. Now I'm gonna come back to explain what an octave exactly is. So from the 12 different unique notes that we have, on the keyboard we have seven ones that are white keys and we have five ones that are black keys. So count them together we have 12 notes, okay? So let's just disregard the black notes for a moment and just focus on the white keys. So in English, we have different letters for these notes, being A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And those are all the basic notes we have, and those are actually all the white keys on the keyboard, right? Now, you might ask then, what are the black keys called? And that's where the term sharp or flat comes in, uh, because we just add those to the letters that we have. Now, let's first off show you which notes are which letters. We start with the letter A, and that's right here. We have a couple more right here, or we have higher ones as well. Those are all the note A. Then if we go one higher, we have B, then C, D, E, F, and G. Now, if we continue further on, we again have A but it's a higher one, an octave higher than the one below, okay? Now, when we want to give names to the black keys on the keyboard, we add the sharp or the flat term to the notes that we have. And we have different kind of options. Let's see, for example, we have the A right here, and the B one higher. But there is one black key in between here. There are two names that we can give that key, or we can call it the A sharp, sharp because it's half a tone higher, so it could be A sharp, the A sharp, or we can call it B flat, because it's half a tone lower than the B. So that's your own choice, it depends a little bit on the key in which a song is written or a piece of music is written, that depends on what they will call that note. But practically it's the same note, A sharp or B flat, right? And we have the same with all the black keys. So if we have this black key right here, if we take the note left from it, that's the C. If we take the note at the right of it, we have the note D. 
So again, we have two names for these, or you can call it the C sharp, because it's half a tone higher than the C, or we can call it the D flat, because it's half a tone lower than the D. Okay, both are correct. The same with D sharp or E flat, that's this one. Then we have the F sharp or the G flat. Or we have right here the G sharp, because it's half a tone higher than the G, or the A flat, because right here we have another A, but it's half a tone lower than that. So G sharp or A flat. These are all the notes. When I learned music in primary school and in high school and such, um, in Dutch we learn the terms Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. And those are less used terms, uh, definitely in English, but in Dutch we call the notes by those names actually. And for some reason that starts at the C. So C is the Do. Then the Re or Re is the D. Then the E is the Mi. Then the F is Fa. G is Sol. We go further to the A, which is La. And then we go further on to the B, which is Si. And then we go further on to the next octave of the Do or the Si. Now that we know all the names of the notes, of these 12 unique notes, why is, in my opinion, the keyboard the best tool to learn music and the easiest? Regardless if you want to learn how to play the piano or just learn music or learn how to play another instrument, uh, if you want to understand music, I think this is the easiest tool. Why is that? Um, in my opinion, that is mostly because of the structure of the keyboard. One thing is that all the notes from low to high are next to each other from left to the keyboard to, to the right of the keyboard. So that is already easy to understand. The higher you go on the keyboard, the higher the note will be. Whilst on a lot of other instruments, it's not as clear as that. Like on stringed instruments, guitar, violin and such, uh, you have different strings and on each string you can progress higher. Um, but there are different positions in which you can play the same note, the same pitch. On the keyboard, that's not the case. We have different octaves, but one specific pitch, for example this one, this, this C, it's only at this key. There's no other way to play this pitch on the keyboard. It's only right here. Another thing is that it's very easy to visualize and to navigate on the keyboard. Because of the structure of those octaves, which I told you before, we have the white keys and we have the black keys. Now if we take an octave for example, and technically an octave is from the C uh, until the next C, in each octave we have a pair of black keys next to each other with one white in between. And we have a trio of black keys next to each other right here as well. And we have the same pattern coming back always. So we have two next to each other, three next to each other, two, three, two, three. And that way it's pretty easy to see at which note we are, right? Every time we have the two ones close to each other, the one below that is the C, right? The note before the three ones is the F. And that is easy to understand. Next guys, why is an octave called an octave? Let's say, for example, we have the C, the note C. If we go one octave higher, that's this C. How many notes is that higher than this one? Eight notes. That's why it's called an octave. So this is the first note. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight higher. We have the next C note. So the same if we go lower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and that's one octave lower. Like I said, in the beginning of the video, if you have a full keyboard, those are 88 keys. And they will usually start by the letter E. That's a very low E note. And an octave theoretically starts with the C note, right? Which is here. This is the first C on the keyboard. So we call this the C1. If we go an octave higher, this is a C2. The C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
and 8 to end. Now, if this is called the C1, now how are these notes before that called? Because that's a B, B flat or A sharp and the A. Those are the A0, A sharp 0 or B flat 0 and the B0. And then we start from the C1 and further on and we build up like that. So guys, that was probably a lot of information if you're a beginner in music, but I'm sure if you watch a couple of times that you will get all of this but it's very important that we understand how these notes work how these octaves work and how we can navigate on the keyboard to learn how to use it to our advantage and how to learn music so guys i hope you learned something again today don't forget to subscribe like and share the video also don't forget to check out my other tutorials because i have a lot of tutorials on guitar uh, if you want to learn how to play the guitar and this might be useful for both actually uh, I also have reaction videos where I react to music related stuff and give my opinion, my reaction and I have my own music videos on my channel as well uh, which are posted more sporadically because those take a lot of time to make. So thank you so much for watching guys and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye! Uh, but I'll do um, where I record and usually because it's a very con because it's a very structured because the, we have that we have it in a couple of octaves of lower we have it in a couple we have it in a but it's in different they're actually and so we have all but theoretic but theoretically it's but practically if we so G, F, Z, O, and those are the and those are all. Why is it that? Why is it in my opinion? Why is the keyboard in my opinion the easiest tool to learn how to get? Whilst on, whilst, uh, whilst on a couple of, and we have a triple of. And we have a triple of. And we have a triplet of. And we have a triplet, and we have a so one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so that's eight. So that's the octave actually technically, and the oct and the octave here, and the then how are these notes in?